Daytona Beach Community College, a comprehensive public college providing access to a range of flexible programs, from community enrichment to the baccalaureate degree. To appreciate the accomplishments of Daytona Beach Community College on this its 50th anniversary, we must look back at its founding in 1957 and beyond to the origins of community college education in Daytona Beach. It all started in 1929 with Opportunity School, a vocational school formed to teach commercial and business skills to students who could not attend college. It was housed in two rooms above a store on Beach Street in Daytona Beach. In 1931, the first in a series of events occurred, which have led to Daytona Beach Community College as we know it today. That was when Mary Brennan Carl, who was a teacher at Seabreeze High School, moved to Opportunity School, where she taught business. In 1937, she became the director of the school. As Opportunity School grew, it moved to a variety of temporary locations until 1940. That's when Mary Carl acquired the old Chateau Lido Club, and the school was moved there. In 1941, the name was changed to Volusia Vocational School. It remained at the Club Lido location through World War II and was used to train Daytona Beach residents to work in the defense industry. It was near the end of the war that another key development in the evolution of Daytona Beach Community College occurred. In June of 1944, the U.S. Army opened the Welsh Convalescent Center to treat wounded servicemen returning from the war and prepare them for civilian life with vocational skills. The Convalescent Center was located west of Daytona Beach on the former site of the Women's Army Corps Cantonment. When the center closed in 1946, Mary Carl, who had been named Director of Vocational Education for Volusia County, saw an opportunity to acquire the facility for the vocational school. As the story goes, she enlisted the help of fellow educator Mary McLeod Bethune, who took her to Washington to meet First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt. Mary Carl presented her idea to Mrs. Roosevelt, who called the Pentagon and arranged for the Convalescent Center to be set aside for the Volusia County Board of Public Instruction. It was to become the permanent home of the Volusia Vocational School and the future home of Daytona Beach Community College. In 1948, Mary Carl died and the school was renamed the Mary Carl Vocational School in her honor. As Florida recovered from World War II and the state's economy began to grow, the need for a convenient, affordable alternative to the four-year colleges was recognized by the Florida legislature. In Volusia County, a junior college was seen as an investment in the future. A group of public school officials, citizens, and the Volusia County Council on Education understood the value of offering convenient and affordable education. 27,000 questionnaires were used to conduct the studies and surveys and determine the need and benefit of a junior college. In March of 1957, John Smiley, superintendent of public instruction for Volusia County, submitted a series of resolutions to the state's community college council, which was directed by Dr. Wattenbarger. This formally began the application process for a junior college. A similar resolution was sent by the Flagler County Board. Dr. Wattenbarger responded with instructions on forming an advisory committee, and since the college was to serve the two counties, the committee was formed with five members from Volusia and four members from Flagler County. On October 4, 1957, after all the studies, reports, and resolutions, the Florida Legislature approved the establishment of six new colleges, and Daytona Beach Junior College was one of them. It was to be Florida's pilot comprehensive junior college. Comprehensive because there would be three programs, a college transfer program offering students the first two years of a four-year degree, vocational training, and adult education classes. As part of the state's segregated education system, a black two-year college was also established to operate parallel to each white college. So on the 4th of October, there were actually two colleges established for Volusia and Flagler counties, Daytona Beach Junior College to serve the white students and Volusia County Community College to serve the black students. It was one of 12 black junior colleges developed in Florida. The two new colleges were good news for everyone in the two counties. There would be educational opportunities and job opportunities and the whole community would be enriched. 
it was progress, and it wasn't long before students began lining up to register. One of the first tasks was to appoint presidents for the newly established colleges. Dr. James M. Snyder was chosen for Daytona Beach Junior College, and Dr. J. Griffin Green was chosen for Volusia County Community College. At the same time, locations had to be selected for the two college campuses. The Welsh area, site of the Mary Carl Vocational School, was chosen for the Daytona Beach Junior College campus. In this photo, Dr. Snyder and County Director of Education A.F. Emmons look over plans for the new campus. The first classes of the new colleges were held in temporary locations while the permanent campuses were being built. DBJC rented space in the Inn of the Princess Icena Hotel on Seabreeze Boulevard, just two blocks from the beach. Classes were held in the guest rooms and the library was in the dining room. <laughs> well, it was uh, the, the Princess Icena Annex was a, a small inn type uh, structure. It had a, a lobby. It had a couple of uh, ante rooms or meeting rooms. Yeah, the Princess Icena Inn was a nice place to go to school because <laughs> there were outdoor staircases that led up to rooms. The rooms had bathrooms. They had been once rooms for people to stay. And I remember in those days, I don't recall air conditioning, in fact. And for a long time, there was, there was no air conditioning, so we'd open the windows. And it was a rather pleasant atmosphere. You walked through a kind of arched way as you went in, just as if you were going to um, a stucco, uh, it was, a, as I recall, this stucco surface, as if you're going into a kind of uh, um, hotel, that, that, but you were going to get college credit for doing it. And it was just a two-story structure, uh, where originally uh, lettable or rentable rooms with, uh, with bathrooms, and uh, so as a consequence, the classrooms each had its own bathroom which was always a, a kind of a, a laughable situation. We, we got a lot of chuckles out of that uh, circumstance, but it turned out to be a, a very comfortable and good setting uh, for the original uh, student body of Daytona Beach Community College. Volusia County Community College opened in a variety of temporary locations, including a rented building on 2nd Avenue, now Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune Boulevard, while a permanent building was being built on the corner of Loomis and Lockhart Streets. After the years of hoping and planning, community college education had finally come to Daytona Beach. During the first week of September 1958, only 11 months after they were officially established, Daytona Beach Junior College and Volusia County Community College began classes. Mary Carl's dream had been fulfilled. Daytona Beach Junior College uh, during its first two years was uh, a unique experience for anyone. Uh, to, to be a member of a, an original student body in a college level uh, institution is not uh, something you do very often in life, but we were very fortunate. Alvin Griggs was a member of one of the first classes at Volusia County Community College. Well, I think the attitude of the community at the time was that it did give us a, a junior college in, in our community as opposed to having to go to other places. At the time I was gone, we had people coming from Sanford to attend Volusia County Community College as well. So not only did we handle uh, Volusia, but we also handled uh, Sanford area as well. While students were attending classes at the Princess Icena, construction was beginning on the permanent buildings of DBJC. On April 12, 1959, there was a groundbreaking ceremony for the first building. State Representative Fred Carl, son of Mary Carl, was the principal speaker and turned the first shovel of soil. On October 20th, 1959, that building, known as the Science Building, opened for classes, and Daytona Beach Community College, as we know it today, began to take shape. For a short time, classes were held at both the Princess Icena and the new DBJC campus, and students commuted between the two. The Welsh area, which became the permanent campus of DBJC, was located in an area west of Daytona Beach known as the Highlands. So when the college moved from the inn on the beach side to the new campus, a Scottish theme was adopted. 
The title of the annual, which had been the innkeeper because the college was located in an inn, was changed to the Highlander. The student newspaper was changed from the undertow to the bagpiper, and the sports teams became the Scots. The cheerleaders wore plaid, and a Scottish coat of arms was chosen for the college with the Latin inscription, Vincent Veritas, or Truth Prevails. In the fall of 1960, Volusia County Community College moved into its new building on the corner of Loomis and Lockhart, part of a 60-acre site known as the Smallwood Tract. It was to include a black junior and senior high school and a vocational center. Campbell Middle School is now located there. The VCCC building is still being used by the county school board. It is now known as the John H. Smiley Educational Development Center, named for County Education Superintendent Smiley, who later became Dean of Applied Sciences at DBCC. As students went about their academic and social activities, construction on the DBJC campus was going strong. Two buildings were completed in 1960. The first was the Mary Carl Library, dedicated to DBJC's founder, Mary Carl, and again, her son, Representative Fred Carl, was on hand for the ceremony. The office of the college president was located in the library until the next building, the administration building, was completed. The principal speaker at the December dedication ceremony was Florida Governor Leroy Collins, who was surprised to learn that the building was dedicated to him. It was named Collins Hall. As the new buildings were being completed, the DBJC campus was becoming an odd mixture of modern and World War II era buildings. The Mary Carl Vocational School was still operating in the surrounding buildings. In June of 1960, both Daytona Beach Junior College and Volusia County Community College graduated their first class. DBJC held their commencement exercise for 57 students at the Community Methodist Church. Dr. James Snyder presided over their ceremony, but it was one of his last official duties as DBJC president. He had announced his resignation as president the preceding April. The search for a successor to Dr. Snyder produced 25 applicants. From these, Dr. Roy Bergengren, head of the Industrial Arts Department of the University of Florida, was selected. And in July 1960, he became the second president of Daytona Beach Junior College. Dr. Bergengren faced two challenges early in his administration. The first was to guide the young college as it continued to move to a new campus and oversee the construction of its new buildings. The second challenge was to oversee the integration of the community college system in Daytona Beach and the merger of Daytona Beach Junior College and Volusia County Community College. The Civil Rights Act of 1964 changed the landscape of public education in the United States and Daytona Beach Junior College and Volusia County Community College were no exception. The merger of Volusia County's two junior colleges was first discussed at a county school board meeting in April of 1965. School Superintendent John Smiley read a letter from the U.S. Department of Education stating that the maintenance of two separate colleges would be considered a violation of the Civil Rights Act. At the following month's meeting on May 11th, the Volusia County Board of Public Instruction voted to merge Daytona Beach Junior College and Volusia County Community College, and another step was taken towards Daytona Beach Community College as we know it today. A plan was developed which would allow the Volusia County Community College sophomores to finish their year at the campus on Loomis Street, which would be called the Volusia Center. The freshman students registering for the fall of 1965 would attend classes at Daytona Beach Junior College. VCCC President Green was named Vice President of the Volusia Center and later became the Dean of Continuing Education at DBJC. Sixteen of the full-time black faculty members were transferred to DBJC and the remainder were offered jobs in the Volusia County school system. The merger ended the segregated community college system, but it was bittersweet for many of the students and residents. Losing Volusia County Community College was more than losing an educational institution. It was losing a community resource that led the way, not only providing college education, but also providing community leadership as well as cultural and athletic activities, and it would be missed. 
From its beginning in 1958 until its merger with Daytona Beach Junior College in 1965, VCCC served approximately 5,600 students in its various divisions. As DBJC celebrated its first decade in 1968, it was recognized for its accomplishment as the pilot program for comprehensive junior colleges. In its first 10 years, 82,411 students had attended the three college divisions. Both young and old students from Volusia and Flagler counties had taken advantage of one or more of DBJC's three divisions. A major milestone for any college is accreditation, and DBJC received its accreditation from the state of Florida in May of 1962 and from the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools in August of 1964. Dr. Bergengren described this as a major achievement. Daytona Beach Junior College has, in my opinion, now matured to the point where it is an institution to be reckoned with in the Volusia Flagler County District. Starting in 1958 with uh, uh, what was at that time a rather limited vocational program, an even more limited general adult program, and a brand new transfer program, uh, this college has now grown to the point where uh, we enroll over 4,000 full-time equivalent students. So in my opinion, Daytona Beach Junior College has matured. It is an institution uh, which will continue uh, to serve this community in, in any way that it possibly can. After 10 years, the DBJC campus had evolved from a World War II WAC base into a thriving community college campus. There were new classrooms, a library, an administration building, a gymnasium, a performing arts center, an industrial arts building, and a student center. But there was still one landmark remaining from the World War II years, the Highlands Presbyterian Church which had been the chapel for the WAC base. It remained as a reminder of Daytona Beach Community College's origin until October of 1972 when it was demolished. The growth in enrollment and construction had been so great in the early 60s that President Bergengren predicted the college would outgrow its present site by 1972 and a new, larger campus would be needed. As far as building is concerned, we now have a plant of which we can be proud, uh, serving the entire program. Uh, we are within a very short time of pleading construction on our first campus site, which is known as the old uh, Welch site. We have, in addition, purchased a new uh, site of 150 acres, uh, which should give us plenty of land uh, in which to expand in the foreseeable future. Uh, in my opinion, uh, that 150-acre site, which is only four miles from the present campus, will, uh, 40 years from now, be the main campus of Daytona Beach Junior College. And at that time, it will be served by at least three branches. The uh, present campus site has a, has a one specialized branch, a branch in the western part of the county and a branch in the southern part of the county. As the mission statement says, the college uses innovation to enhance teaching and learning. This was true from the very beginning. Soon after DBJC was formed, the college began broadcasting college credit courses over WNDB radio. And in 1962, the college began televising courses in cooperation with WESH-TV. The students were taught TV production in a studio located in the Mary Carl Library. Another milestone in DBCC history occurred on July 1st, 1968. On that date, the District Board of Trustees became the single administrative body governing the college. This board had previously served as an advisory board. The title for the property was transferred from the County Board of Public Instruction to the state of Florida. The first action of the new board was to reappoint Dr. Bergengren as president. At the next board meeting, Paul Baker of Daytona Beach was elected first chairman of the board. Another step toward Daytona Beach Community College as we know it today was the change of the name from Junior College to Community College. This happened on the 1st of July, 1971. The college was originally called a Junior College to avoid offending the four-year colleges. The name change meant a new sign and a change to the logo. 
Dr. Bergengren told the 301 graduates at the May 1972 commencement that they were the first graduates from the community college. We are community oriented, he said. We are governed by a lay board representing the community. We seek to serve the educational needs of the community, consistent with our financial, legal, and human limitations. Serving the community is our goal. Daytona Beach Junior College and Volusia County Community College developed as institutions offering students college-level education. And they also offered their students social and athletic activities that gave them the pride of being part of a college student body and allowed them to establish an identity and traditions. One of the first acts of the DBJC student body was to establish the Student Government Association, Richard Rozier was the first SGA president and later served on the DBCC Board of Trustees. What, what I became was the president, president, the first president of the Student Government Association. And uh, again, along with the uniqueness of the opportunity to, to, to attend a college or educational institution in its formative years, uh, gave me and others involved in the student government organization an opportunity to, to draft and, and pass uh, a constitution. Uh, of course, our primary interests were to, mo to promote the interests of the, the student body, and that's what we uh, attempted to do. We had a very good working relationship with Dr. Snyder, who was the original president of the, of the college, and his staff, and uh, we were able to make substantial progress during those early years. The student bodies were small and the college experiences new, but students found ways to enjoy their college experience. The yearbook was one. It was an important souvenir for any college student, and both colleges produced one. They provided a look at the first students and their academic and social life. The Daytona Beach Junior College yearbook was titled The Innkeeper because classes were held in an inn. Skip Lowry was the editor. If you look at one of the yearbooks, you'll notice how few people there were in the class that would graduate in 1960. But we decided we would um, cross-section some of the campus life. And for example, in one, one piece we did in the yearbook was about families, which you certainly wouldn't see in a yearbook normally for a college. But these are people who were married, had children, uh, were trying to go to school, and the struggles they were going through. So we had pictures of families in their homes, if you would, and they were, that was an important part of it. And there were other things like new clubs that had started, um, academic clubs as well as social clubs. All of that had needed to be documented, as well as the normal pictures of those people who were graduating. And I wrote, I remember an afterward to the 1960 yearbook um, about the first graduating class that also suggests that it was, it, it was not just legitimizing our existence as college students, but because we felt this sense of family. It would be like a family photo album, and to a great extent it was. You've got to understand how very close everyone felt to each other because there was such a small class. And so in the, in the uh, epilogue to the 1960 edition, I mentioned going to Ken Ann's on Seabreeze and having coffee, whereas a lot of us would go down there between classes and we'd have coffee and get to know each other and talk and became friends. Um, many have friends that have lasted now for f almost 50 years on the basis of that. So the yearbook was a way of, uh, like, like a personal photo admiral as well as, uh, you said, a kind of legitimizing of the fact that we were actual college students and had existed at this particular point in time. And I think it did serve that function, yeah. From the very beginning, sports were an important part of campus life. There were organized teams for both men and women, and some intramural sports were played on the infield of Daytona International Speedway. Daytona Beach Junior College became the Scots in 1963 because of the campus location in the Highlands. Volusia County Community College were the Falcons, a name adopted by Daytona Beach Community College in the year 2000. Over the years, DBCC men and women athletes have won championships in basketball, baseball, softball, swimming and diving, golf and surfing. The college's pride in its athletic programs is reflected in the trophies for past championship teams and the quality of the facilities for the current teams. 
DBJC and Volusia County Community College students also formed clubs, some academic and others purely social. Um, I started a club, or at least became the first president of one, mainly because we wanted to find a way to buy beer more cheaply. If we, and if we got it by the keg, it was a lot cheaper than if we just bought it our own. So we decided we'd start a club and that way we would have a reason to buy a keg and have a party. I've forgotten that it was called the SAIS, a Students Activities Youth something. I, I don't even know what it was. It didn't matter because our main point was just to have a reason to go to the beach and set up a keg and have a party. In those days you could still go to the beach at night and we could have a kind of fraternal party out there and bring our dates and everybody build a fire and drink beer. So that was one of the club. <laughs> it was a social club. Um, there were, so there was drama, there was um, social clubs, there were educational fraternities, there, was, there were others too, I'm sure. Well, in a way, the editorial staff was like a club of the yearbook. So there was a, a lot of opportunities for people to belong to things. And it was very easy to become part of the club because there weren't that many students. So. Students at both colleges found ways to enjoy the social side of college. There were dances, formal and informal, they had beach parties and parades. And they chose Miss VCCC and Miss DBJC. If campus life is a reflection of society, then the students at DBCC were no exception. The changing times can be seen in the dress and hairstyles. The changing times can also be seen in the musical groups that played at DBCC. In the early 60s, the Kingston Trio and the Letterman performed. In the early 70s, it was the Strawberry Alarm Clock, Buffalo Springfield, and the Beach Boys. Hometown favorites, the Allman Brothers, also performed several times. As on most college campuses, there were demonstrations and protests for and against various causes. Student dress became an issue in the 60s, and a dress code was established. This led to the sock incident. Male students were required to wear socks, and to protest, a group refused to wear socks and were not allowed into class. And the DBCC campus also had that 70s phenomenon, streakers. A major era in the history of DBCC ended in May of 1974 with the retirement of President Bergengren. During his 14 years as president, DBCC had grown from three buildings surrounded by pine trees to a modern college campus with 16 buildings. The budget had grown from $200,000 in 1960 to more than $6 million. The faculty had grown from 62 to 183, and enrollment was nearly 17,000. In his farewell statement to the college, Dr. Bergengren said, We have only scratched the surface of the potential for service to this community. We must face the future with open, creative minds. The end of one era was the beginning of another. There were more than 150 applicants to replace Dr. Bergengren as DBCC president. From these, the search committee selected Dr. Charles Polk, dean of the downtown campus of Florida Junior College in Jacksonville. On May 1, 1974, Dr. Polk became the third regular president of DBCC, and at 31, the youngest community college president in the nation. In 1978, DBCC celebrated its 20th anniversary. It had matured into an institution that was making a significant difference in the lives of the citizens of Volusia and Flagler counties. In addition to what was then referred to as the main campus in Daytona Beach, satellite centers had been opened in West Volusia, South Volusia, and Flagler County. The first of these centers to open was the West Volusia Center. It was located in a former supermarket on New York Avenue in DeLand and began operations in August of 1977. The college's second satellite center, the South Volusia Center, opened in August of 1978 in the renovated second floor of a strip mall in New Smyrna Beach. The Flagler Palm Coast Center opened in the fall of 1979 with 360 students. It was in response to the rapid growth of Palm Coast and Flagler County. In the early 80s, these temporary satellite centers were replaced by permanent campuses. 
As the college was expanding out into the community it served, it was also expanding upward on the Daytona Beach campus. The Mary Carl Library was renovated and enlarged several times. The last enlargement in 1982 added four floors of offices and classrooms, a media center, and a TV studio. It is now known as the Mary Carl Memorial Learning Resource Center. The five-story Allied Health Building was also completed at about the same time. The next step in the use of technology to offer educational opportunities occurred on February 1, 1988. On that date, Daytona Beach Community College began broadcasting on its own television station, WCEU-TV 15. At first, the station broadcast only three hours a day, three days a week, using the TV studio located in the Learning Resource Center. The station is now broadcasting 19 hours a day from a new state-of-the-art digital broadcast facility. It's also a classroom for students in the television production program. Dr. Polk's presidency ended after 16 years with his resignation in 1990. During his administration, the college had continued to grow and reach out into the community with four branch campuses and a TV station. In addition, a joint use facility was built on the Daytona Beach campus, which allowed students to attend the University of Central Florida and earn a four-year degree without leaving Daytona Beach. Shortly after leaving, the board named Dr. Polk President Emeritus. The presidency was passed from Dr. Polk to Dr. Philip Day, Jr., the former president of Cape Cod Community College in Massachusetts. Dr. Day, who had attended a community college as a student, began his administration in April of 1990 with the intention of making DBCC the best community college possible, with the emphasis on community. To accomplish this, Dr. Day continued the construction of branch campuses. In the fall of 1997, DBCC formed a partnership with Volusia and Flagler County School Systems to develop the Advanced Technology Center, a facility that would provide new and innovative technology education. The story of Daytona Beach Community College can be told in its buildings. A walk across the campus is like a walk through the history of the college. Most buildings are known by their use, the Student Center, the Learning Resource Center, the Science Building. But many of the buildings bear the names of people who shared a vision and helped to make education accessible to all in the community. The first building, the Science Building, was built in 1959. When the Division of Communications moved to that building in the 1980s, the name was changed to the Herbert M. Davidson Communication Building honoring the editor and publisher of the Daytona Beach News Journal and former DBJC board member. The second building completed in 1960 was the Mary Carl Library, dedicated to DBCC founder Mary Carl. The next building, Collins Hall, was also completed in 1960. It was the administration building dedicated to Florida Governor Leroy Collins, who was a strong supporter of the state's community college system. That building has now been removed to create a student commons. Bailey Hall of Technology, completed in 1963, was named for Thomas D. Bailey, the state superintendent of schools, when the community college system was created. The Len Holt Student Center, completed in 1966, is dedicated to Lillian Len Holt, served as the chair of the original Daytona Beach Junior College Advisory Committee and supported the college with scholarship funds. Another member of the original advisory committee was Paul Baker, who later became chairman of the first DBJC Board of Trustees. Baker Hall was named after him. Jeannie Goddard was another member of the advisory committee who was a charter member of the DBCC Board of Trustees and served as chair of the board for eight years. The Goddard Center for the Arts was named for her. The Virgin Grin Administration Building, dedicated to President Virgin Grin, served as the college's central administrative and continuing education offices until 1992 when the administration moved to its new Weatherall Student Services Center and Administration Building. 
It's dedicated to Tom Weatherall and his family, who are longtime supporters of education in our community. The L. Gale Lemeran Center houses the college's gymnasium and aquatic center. In August of 1997, it was dedicated to Gail Lemerand, a former board member who provided financial support for the building. The J. Griffin Green Student Resource Center is named for Dr. J. Griffin Green, the president of Volusia County Community College and later an administrator at Daytona Beach Junior College. Dr. William W. Schildecker was a member of the first Board of Trustees and also chair of the Bert Fish Foundation, which donated money for the Schildecker Science Building, as well as many other causes over the years. The newest building on campus is the Maury Husseini Center, which will serve students in the culinary and hospitality program, and will also be the new home of the Southeast Museum of Photography. Maury Husseini is the cornerstone contributor and is a generous supporter of higher education in our community. Over the past 50 years, Daytona Beach Community College has grown and changed. But in many ways, things have remained the same. One example is the hospitality industry, which has always been an important part of the Daytona Beach economy. Daytona Beach Junior College recognized this and first offered motel management classes in 1958. Over the years, students have been taught on campus and on the job for these important jobs. And now, the new Maury Husseini Center is a building dedicated to serving students in the area's culinary and hospitality. Opportunity School and the Mary Carl Vocational School taught the job skills needed for the 30s and 40s. Now, the Advanced Technology Center is continuing that mission with the technology for the new century. From its beginning, Daytona Beach Junior College sought innovative ways to deliver college education, and television and radio were two of the first choices. And now, DBCC-TV broadcasts in nine counties over its own PBS station, WCEU. As the college has grown and enrollment increased, the need for parking has also increased. It's a problem that the college has been dealing with since the beginning. The first class of DBJC students at the Princess Icena Hotel back in 1958 were told there would be a parking problem on Seabreeze Boulevard. No matter how much things have changed, some things remain the same. A sign of the college's growth is the construction. There's hardly been a time when there wasn't something being built on one of the campuses. On the Daytona Beach campus, which was predicted to be outgrown by the 70s, construction continues. Old buildings are coming down as new ones are being built. As enrollment increases and new programs are offered, the need for more modern facilities will continue and the college will build to meet that need. DBCC entered the new millennium with a new president, Dr. Kent Sharples who had been president of Horry Georgetown Technical College in Conway, South Carolina. He brought a new spirit of teaching, learning, and community service to the college. This was demonstrated by the opening of the Advanced Technology Center in the fall of 2003. The opening class had 176 dual-enrolled high school students, along with over 500 adult students. Also in 2003, Dr. Sharples guided the college as it received its reaffirmation from the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools. Perhaps the most significant event in Dr. Sharples' presidency occurred in 2005, when the Florida State Board of Education and the Southern Association approved DBCC's application to offer baccalaureate degrees. So, as DBCC approached its 50th anniversary, it officially became a four-year institution. Daytona Beach Community College's 50th anniversary celebration is a celebration of the students, faculty, administrators, and community leaders who have made the college what it is today. An institution that has changed the lives of everyone it has touched and the community it serves. From Opportunity School to the Mary Carl Vocational School, from Daytona Beach Junior College and Volusia County Community College to Daytona Beach Community College, the vision has been fulfilled and the mission of the state's pilot comprehensive community college has been exceeded. 
what started as job training at Opportunity School is now baccalaureate degrees at DBCC. In about 1957, when we began the junior college program, it was decided that the, the junior colleges ought to actually be community colleges. That is to say, we ought to have vocational education, adult education, and then the college transfer or the college level kind of program. This has been a noble experiment. It's worked very well. There have been people go to that institution thinking they were going to concentrate just on vocational programs and have become interested in academic programs and come out of that institution with a well-rounded and a very broad education. Just as visionaries laid the foundation for what DBCC is today, visionaries will guide the college forward as it continues to build on that foundation. For all of the students, past and future, Daytona Beach Community College will continue to be an institution of opportunity for all. And everyone who has been a part of the 50-year history can say, we made a difference. Hello, I'm Kent Sharples. And you know, 50 years ago, a group of very progressive citizens of Volusia and Flagler counties had a great vision. That vision forever changed the role of education in the development of these two counties. Fifty years later, all of us at Daytona Beach College are very proud of what has been accomplished, and we're certainly excited about the future. As we begin our next 50 years, we're looking forward to continued growth and maturity of this institution. As evidence of this growth and maturity, we are now offering baccalaureate degrees in several different areas. To assist our graduates and to reflect the importance of these programs, we're changing our name to Daytona Beach College. While the name has changed, our mission has not. It is exactly as the same as it has been. Daytona Beach College will be an institution offering opportunity and will continue to shape our community for the next 50 years.